what's going on guys today we're carrying over with snort challenge the basics and we're gonna finish the last three tasks troubleshooting rule syntax errors and we're gonna use snort or learn how to write rules for detecting vulnerabilities such as ms17010 and log4j so to get started first we deploy the machine and we navigate to the task folder so there we go um, let's open up task 6 okay so in task 6 we go over 7 rules files and we are required to find out what is wrong with the rules file fix the error and run it against the vcap file answering the questions here okay so let's go ahead and navigate through these rules files the first rules file is local one rules so i'm gonna go ahead double click on troubleshooting double click the rules file and see what's wrong in this file so this is the first rule alert tcp this is the protocol any port 3372 this is the direction outbound any any and we have here the message troubleshooting one sid and revision one so it seems like there is nothing wrong with this but as you can see we have here one there is no spacing so if we run this rules file it's going to complain that there is an error let's make this bigger zoom in okay let's do it from the command line so sudo snort dash c local one rules and we have the pickup file dash rmx so the problem here is that as you can see we have the, it tells you where is the error so any message here is the error so you're going to find out what it is now if you get back if we nano local one as you can see we have to create the spacing between the any and the first parenthesis hit save and then we run the rules file one more time and now it runs without any problem as you can see the number of alerts is 16 we take the answer and put it in the first question next one troubleshooting the next rules file so let's take a look first or oh, let's run the rules file against north using we can also test the rules file as you can see by the way we can uh, take a look at this command this command tells you guys um, runs snort in console mode which tells you where exactly the error is so let's try this sudo that snort dash c lo local 2 dash r dash a console mode and as you can see the error is saying port value missing in rule let's take a look at the rules file nano local 2 so here's the rule alert icmp any and there is no protocol or there is no ip we can treat the any here as protocol or as ip but in uh, in the troubleshooting or with the output it's telling us that it's missing the port so you're gonna have to add the port here you can add any would suffice so hit save and we run the rules file like that against the pcap and we got 68 alerts which marks the answer for the next question okay third rules file sudo snort local 3 dash r and we run this let's see what's the error this time cannot set DAC PPF filter to local 3 rules cannot parse filter expression syntax error okay let's take a look at the expression nano local 3 all right so alert icmp any 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 message icmp packet found sid revision nothing wrong with this one the next one alert tcp any 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 at443 fine and the message httpx packet found uh -huh. as you can see the problem here is the revision and the sid numbers are the same they got to be unique so we're gonna have to change this to two and this to two as well that's why it didn't work now i run this and it works so the number of alerts is 87 okay next one snort 
sudo-snort-c local4 the, the fourth rules file dash r the pickup file and we'll see what's wrong now unmatch code in rule option message let's take a look now at the rule option message nano local4 so we have unmatched codes are we at the fourth file yes so message you have double quotes here and double quotes see this is fine next one double quotes and double quotes and here we have column we're gonna have to replace this with semicolon so here becomes semicolon also change the sids and revision numbers they got to be unique hit save and run this and we got 90 alerts okay the five rules file Net, okay sudo snort local six yes i always forget the dash c don't know why dash r let's run this against so it works fine but we don't have alerts as you can see the the five the fifth rules file works fine no errors but it doesn't generate any alerts which doesn't make sense so we're gonna have again to do a check up on the rules file nano local local five let's see here so alert icmp any any inbound outbound message sid revision alert icmp any any and look at the, take a look at this so here the person who wrote this rule was thinking that i want an impound rule right so impound coming from this direction to this direction but unfortunately in this note you only have two directions impound outbound or only outbound there is no such thing so we're gonna have to change this maybe to um i don't know do it like that since we have one impound and outbound we're gonna make this outbound so remove this and use this direction do a checkup on the other rule options message is fine sid let's change the revision number to two and here revision number to three okay now we run this and now we get 155 okay next one sudo snort local six dash r so the problem here is also we haven't specified a dash c zero alerts fix the logical error in log in local six rules the logical error means uh it's something has to do with the operations of the rules operability of the rules so basically syntax errors are errors that prevent the rules file from running logical errors are errors that let you run the rules file but will not generate any meaningful results so we call them the logical errors so let's inspect now the rules file the sixth one and see what is the logical error here alert tcp any any and as you can see inbound and outbound to port 80 get request found so here we are filtering for get requests the content is binary and this id is fine the revision is fine so may, may, probably here we have to change this to reflect the actual objective of the rule the objective of the rule is to detect get requests so we're gonna have to uh, filter payloads where or where the content contains uh, something that has to do with the get request so one of the things is the word get if we filter the word get or the http get request normally contain the word get in the request so if we filter for this and run the rules file we will get two alerts and this is two fix the logical error in local seven rules and make it work smoothly let's see so sudo snort local seven dash c always forgetting dash c nine alerts 
All right. What's the problem now? What's the name of the required option? Let's take a look at the seven rules file. So alert TCP and any this this is fine, but the problem is we don't have one rule option is absent or is missing, which is the message. So this marks the end of task six. Let's now use NOR to detect vulnerabilities. So MS 17010, by the way, you can Google this and understand what is this. So Microsoft Security Bulletin MS 17, it is, let's see here, what is this? This is an update, by the way. Let's go to CVE database, CV SS score. Okay. The SMB version 1 server in Microsoft Windows, Vista, Servers Pack 2, Server, Windows Server, and Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows Server 2012. Windows 8 as well, Windows 10 Gold, has this vulnerability. And the this is the score. It will be required in the upcoming questions, by the way. You can take the answer from here. So this is a vulnerability. Um, Okay, so this vulnerability has to do with Microsoft products. Let's go back now, close this file, and clear ls cd back cd to the task 7. Okay, so we have two rules files, and we have one pika. Expand this one. Use the given rule file to investigate MS. 1710 exploitation. What is the number of detected packets? Let's take a look now at the rules file first. So cat local.rules. It doesn't look good, I know, but let's take a look at how these rules are written. So the first rule alert TCP any 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 four five. So all outbound um, packets to port four five four four five HTTPS packets it means the message explode detected the flow to server the flow means we decide the direction either to server or to client depending on the direction of the packet here it could be all either also established established mean we look only for established connections in the tcb three-way handshake and the direction is to server outbound peak re we have binary content to filter for this tag actually this option is used to filter for binary content as well it's it's similar to uh, the content rule option and the revision is two and we have other rules so these rules contain as you can see the content used in these rules here there in the rule option contents everything mentioned here is actually considered let me say it, indicators of the existence of this exploit or an attempt to exploit this vulnerability so whenever we whenever snort detects uh one of the contents here it would attribute it to an exploitation attempt of, of this vulnerability okay so let's run this rule file now sudo snort dash c local rules dash r and let's see now if this packet capture file okay uh, contains exploitation attempt of this vulnerability it's gonna take some time because the rules file is big so the processing would take some time and this is the number of detected alerts it means we have 25,154 packets where there is potential exploitation attempt of this vulnerability that was taking place at the network where we or from which we have taken the packet capture so this is the number of detected packets clear the previous log and alarm files use local one rules empty file to write a new rule to detect payloads containing the ipc keyword so now we're gonna have to change or to start with a new rules file so we're gonna work with this one nano local one and here we're going to write our first rule the first rule is designed to detect payloads containing the word ipc so we're gonna there is no criteria on the port and the destination port and ip so we're gonna say alert tcp any any the direction should be inbound outbound any any 
and here we start with the rule options the first one is message let's say IPC keyword is found and then we type the content the content will contain the keyword IPC I'm gonna, I'm gonna write this myself IPC okay and we have the SID one four zeros one and the revision number should be one okay let's see now run this let's see how many alerts it generates 43625 is that possible what is the number of the packets nope so we have a problem the content option will help you to filter the payload yep we use this taking another look at the file okay one last thing here is the semicolon and now we can run this file so run and we get 12 alerts okay the next one investigate the log alarm files so we should have generated a log file but we didn't so we're gonna have to run snort or rerun snort in packet logger mode the same command just um, use dash dev dash l dash dev dash l and specify the current working directory as the place to which we were gonna save the log file all right so now it's going over the packets processing everything it didn't take that long when i run this for the first time okay now we have one log file i'm gonna investigate this and find what what is the requested path all right so this is the log file sudo snort dash c uh, dash r or first let's specify dash t uh, dumping the full packet details and dash c uh, dash r the log file and let's dump the first 10 packet first okay uh, it's gonna be hard filtering through all of these let's look at the last the last packet I guess I found something here so the packet number 10 as you can see we have a request path through the protocol SMB and this is the path take it start from the two backslashes all the way until the IPC word keyword this is the requested path what is the CVSS version 2 score it is already here 9.3 now let's jump to the last task where we use snort rules to detect the recent infamous log4j vulnerability all right so now cd back and cd to the last task task number eight all right so we have again two local rules file let's take a look at the first rules file which was written to detect the log4j using snort so nano local rules and this is what it looks like alert tcp any 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 no criteria on the port or the IP and as you can see if you take a look at the payload content here so these are metadata all right let's see other rule options priority 3 this is the uh, fast pattern okay ah the content take a look at this so the content used here is considered as indicators of the log4j exploit and you can find these indicators of compromise on any page on the internet by the way use them put them in a rules file or in a rules file and use them in the content rule option to create your snort uh, rules file that will detect log4j vulnerability or exploitation of course log4j exploit so now let's run this rules file sudo snort are we required to generate a log file yes we are so we can run this in packet logger mode dash c local dot rules dash dev dash l and then last we specify the packet capture file dash r 
Look for J. What's happening? Okay, here it is. First question. What is the number of alerts or detected packets? We have 26. That's right. Investigate the lock alarm files. How many rules were triggered? This one's going to be a bit tricky. So, in this question, we're looking to find out what are the rules that triggered the alerts. Meaning that we want to find out what rules were responsible for detecting the exploit. How many rules? So, we're going to have to see the rules. For this, to answer this question, we're going to have to look at the alerts file. So, taking a look at the alerts file, cat alert. We see here the SID of the rule, right? Take a look at the SID here. So using the SIDs, we're going to have to find out, by the way, we're going to have to find out how many rules were uh, triggered or were used to trigger the, the alarms. So that's how we're going to find out using the SIDs, by the way. So how to use this? We can use cat and grip at the same time to grip the rules number. As you can see, there is a pattern here. It starts with 210037 and only the last two digits or I mean this before the column changes. So the last two digits change all the time and the rest of the pattern stays the same. So if we use now cat alert and pipe this to grip Let's do like that, gripping this pattern. Star, we don't care about anything else that comes after. Uh, let's use this one, like that. Okay, how about this? Let's cancel these. Okay, so as you can see here, we have one ends with 26, 30, 31. Now we have three rules, right? The rest are the same. And we have 28. So in total, we have four rules. What are the first six digits of the triggered rule SIDs? This question is closely connected with the previous one. If you answer this correctly without any problem, you're going to have no hustle uh, or obstacles finding the answer for this one. So the first six digits are these 210037. They don't change. And this is the criteria that you will use to find out the number of rules, by the way. Clear the previous log and alarm files. Use local one rules file to write a new rule to detect payloads between 770 and 855 bytes. Okay, so um, sudo rm snort alert and now nano local one. Okay, let's write a new rule alert tcp any any both directions, I would assume any any. And now we start with the message. Say abnormal packet size detected. And now we're going to use the rule option D size to filter for the packet size. So, according to snort, snort documentation, snort D size, there is a way to use this option. Let's see here. Filter for D size. So we write D size, minimum and maximum. Between them, we put two arrows. That's how it works, simple. So the minimum size is 770 and the maximum size is 855. So we put the first one here and the next one here. So 777, 855, right? 770, 855, that's fine. And now we write the SIDs, 
one four zeros one revision number one okay sudo snort dash c local one are we required to generate a log file yes so dash dev dash l and now dash r log 4j okay we have 41 alerts which is right investigate the alarm files what is the name of the used encoding algorithm what is the name of the used encoding algorithm all right so since we have 41 alerts let's filter through these alerts by using the dash in option which is used to control the number of packets displayed in the output so ls we have one log file sudo snort dash r dash d dash n 10 the first 10 packets let's take a look at these packets okay so you're gonna have to look at all of these all right one by one so these are 10 packets you won't find anything in here i'm gonna now choose um 20 packets and look at the last 10 packets only so again it's not clear here what is the encoding algorithm that have be, that has been used i'm looking at the packet details by the way if you are wondering where i'm looking okay we can pipe this to maybe no we cannot pipe this by the way because we don't know what is the encoding algorithm let's filter for 30 30 packets and look at the last 10 packets again and they appear to be the same the first 30 packets appear to be the same let's look at 41 and look at the last 11 packets and here is something different So this is packet number 41 okay now packet number 40 so there is a request aha uh -huh. as you can see this is the one of the log 4j payloads to this ip address basic command base 64 that's the encoding algorithm what's the ip id of the corresponding packet the ip id of the packets from which we extracted the answer or from which we found the uh, encoding algorithm it is this one this is the ip id okay investigate the log alarm files decode the encoded command so what you're gonna have to do guys you're gonna have to copy this okay strip the hex uh, digits the hex characters and then use base64 encode you're gonna find that this is the command what is the CVSS score of the log4j vulnerability? It is 9.3. So that was the room of Snort Challenge the Basics. Now where to go from here? You can go to Snort Challenge 2, where you investigate live attacks. The attacks are brute force and reversal. I did a video on this room. You can find it on my channel. So that was for today. I hope you guys like this and see you in the next video.